So, hey, my name is Eric Johnson. I'm a veterinarian in Marietta, Georgia. I have a specialty in fish health. Uh, I've worked on koi and goldfish, as well as other species, actually, for many years. Uh, graduated from veterinary school in 1991. I'd already been through uh, Jack Gratzik's uh, exotics class twice. Took it another year and then taught it for two. And uh, what I came here to talk to you about is a virus that affects koi, not goldfish, uh, but it affects koi at a very, very serious level with mortalities up to about 80%. It's called koi herpes virus. It is extremely contagious, but there's kind of a lot to know about it. It affects retailers, especially um, if you sell a fish with koi herpes virus, it can be the end of your business because it is so uh, reputation destructive. If you happen to collect a koi with koi herpes virus, you will lose most of your collection. However, there is a cure. And the reason for this video is because the cure is uh, currently and for years uh, downplayed and poo-pooed by the establishment surrounding the koi hobby and I'll explain to you at the conclusion of the video why that is so you might want to get a pen and paper handy because we're going to cover a lot. Koi herpes virus was noticed uh, probably in England shoot 12, 15, 18 years ago started wiping out a large number of fish and uh, that was the first time it got um, kind of in print and on paper. And uh, then it was seen a few more times. Um, the first time the uh, United States saw it, it was at a koi show, I suppose, and some people bought some fish with koi herpes virus, took the fish back to California uh, and Arizona, and a couple other places out west, and a lot of fish died in the California areas, um, other places around the northeast, etc. But no fish died in Arizona. And uh, that connects later in what I'm going to tell you. The fish in question that were dying, uh, the better than 80% of the fish in this, the collections died. They all died the same way. They peeled. Uh, the outside of the fish peeled, got milky and started to peel off. The inside of the fish started to peel. It turns out if you'd cut them open and looked, the kidneys would have peeled out, lining of the intestine. Uh, fins rotted off. Uh, the fish became fearless as their gills stopped being able to carry oxygen. And, uh, and then they died en masse. And uh, a virus particle was found and the virus particle resembled a herpes virus and had some latency, turns out. It uh, would reside in the fish undetected and inactive below a certain temperature. It seemed like it was 65 or so degrees Fahrenheit. And then when the virus was brought up into the high 60s, low 70s, the virus would activate and wipe out uh, whatever collection of fish that it was in. Um, so it was a temperature sensitive virus and uh, massively fatal. So here's the thing. When it was brought to Arizona, those temperatures down in Arizona were very high. And those fish uh, were briefly ill and all of them survived with the, um, the exception of no fish. And uh, the reason for that, it turns out, is because the koi herpes virus is uh, heat, uh, heat label, meaning that the capsid of the virus particle breaks down at higher temperatures. It turns out that 80 degrees Fahrenheit or slightly over 80 degrees Fahrenheit breaks down the capsid of the virus particle and the DNA spills out and that's it. The virus is, is dead and uh, that's the end of it. 
turns out, based on uh, the anecdotal evidence and one test that was done at the University of Georgia, Georgia the uh, virus particle is undetectable after uh, superheating those fish. Uh, there's a problem with superheating the fish, though, by the way. It was uh, a theory tested by a couple of retailers and then confirmed the problem with the fish that uh, with koi herpes virus imported from a breeder in Arkansas that had the virus, they brought them in and heated them to clear the virus, which was successful, but the problem was that the three color fish, Sanki, Kohaku, when they were heated rapidly to 80 to 82 degrees, the red color uh, was lost in a lot of those fish and it devalued those fish. So if you were going to bring in a thousand uh, fingerlings or yearlings or even two year old fish, and then heat them to prevent yourself from selling fish with koi herpes virus, you might actually just blanch a bunch of valuable fish, which then wouldn't have koi herpes virus, yay, but would uh, be devalued by the fact that you'd cost them all their color. So a lot of retailers decided at that point that they would only heat the fish if they started to see symptoms of koi herpes virus. A lot of other retailers started when they would get fish in from suspect areas like Arkansas and certain breeders in Japan and even uh, breeders in uh, Taiwan and Vietnam and China later, they would send a fish off immediately to Koi Lab and other laboratories to find out if Koi herpes virus was even there. And then if necessary, they would clear the infections with heat or otherwise. A lot of breeders, uh, importers would kill all the fish if they had koi herpes virus, which I admire. That's great. Um, that would bankrupt a lot of importers because their businesses kind of hinge on the success of a couple of importations of a thousand fish. It's expensive to bring the fish in and losing a, a big batch of fish for some importers is, that's, that's it. That's the swinging that and then losing 100% of that is more than they could financially carry. Um, the thing about that is, is that there's a question or was a question about whether or not after you heat those fish, whether or not they still carry the virus and could be infectious down the road and not to take any chances. Some of the importers would just kill every fish that was exposed to the koi herpes virus. And like I said, I admire that uh, extra level of responsibility that they were taking uh, in the situation with the koi herpes virus, I do. Um, so, that being said, um, a very limited study was taken at the uh, uh, University of Georgia where they had fish that were infected with koi herpes virus. They were superheated and then the virus was um, attempted to be detected in the surviving Actually, all the fish survived, it survived, but they t attempted to detect the virus in the fish that were infected with the koi herpes virus, and they could not find the particle anymore. But that test was confounded because they never were able to prove that the fish were actually infected or that the virus particle was just in the tissue. So it wasn't the kind of thing that gets published on. It's a... Uh, kind of an inference that doesn't uh, sustain peer review. Um, it doesn't hold up to great scrutiny, but it was highly suggestive that superheating the fish to 80 or above clears the virus, which supports some of the work from Israel that says that the virus capsid is labeled to heat. Okay, so I think that's pretty much what I wanted to cover regarding koi herpes virus, and that is that it uh, probably started in Israel, went to England, came to the United States, killed a bunch of fish, except fish that went into super warm environments down in the southwest. It turned out to be a herpes-like particle that was latent in temperatures below 68 degrees. It manifested in temperatures above 68 degrees 
and up to about 78 degrees. It cleared in temperatures above 80 degrees and stayed away in fish that had been heated above 80 degrees. It was used as a cure in vendors that had imported fish with koi herpes virus and in private collections. Brenda and Charlie Atwell, for example, saved a collection of fish down in Georgia and uh, that was no secret. Um, I found out about it and told them to heat their fish and they saved theirs, including warthog, which was a famous fish they had brought back from Japan. And uh, that there is a question legitimately as to whether or not those fish are 100% safe to sell after that. Um, a lot of vendors have determined through experience that they are and um, uh, like I said, I think those were the high points of, of what I uh, wanted to get on here and tell you. So, thank you for watching and I appreciate it and I will talk to you again.